Hey everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are covering the Maw and Torghast, um, two of kind of the new systems and zones that are being introduced in Shadowlands. They will kind of play a pretty important role in late progression and character progression in general. So first up, covering the Maw. Initially, the Maw was pretty barren, so this is a special zone that you will unlock at max level. Um, other than being there at the very beginning of your leveling experience, where you will get some special rewards. Um, within the Maw, you will have to grind a reputation with Venari, um, and you will be able to buy some cool rewards from her, such as sockets for your gear. Um, and you will also be able to buy random conduits, so these are going to be super useful. Now, for heroic and early mythic progression, you're most likely not going to be able to buy sockets quite yet because they're expensive and you have to be at max reputation for them. But later on in the tier, when everything is on farm, this is essentially going to be the place that you're going to do daily just to kind of maximize your gear a little bit. All right, so let's go over what's in the maw and what you should be focused on doing. The main and most important thing that you should be doing in the maw every day is the daily quests to get the reputation um, in the maw and collecting stygia so stygia is a resource that you're only able to collect in the maw and nowhere else since you have a limited time um, that you can spend in the maw each day because there's a stacking debuff that is going to progress the more time and the more uh, resources you collect in the maw that will eventually make it so you can't be in there at all. Um, the first three levels are just minor inconveniences. When you get to level four, you will get picked up by a Valkyrie and flown up high in the sky, then dropped to your death, uh, which is a little inconvenient. But once you progress your reputation enough, you can buy an item to counter this. And then once you get to level five, you will get a dot that will eventually kill you. Dying in the Maw, is something that you want to avoid doing because whenever you die you lose a portion of your stygia um, and this means that those resources that you're collecting if you die and you can't get back to your body to pick up the resources you dropped um, you they might be lost forever so whenever you go to the maw to do your daily quest i recommend turning war mode off because you don't really get a bonus for having it on and this will also mean that you're going to be a lot safer since you're not going to be getting attacked by players on top of the already pretty difficult mobs that are in the maw. So within the maw, you want to get your daily quest done. You want to farm up Stygia. Um, you should be able to get 800 reputation a day and 1000 Stygia every day. Um, and on top of that, they will have weekly story quests that you can get done. Um, if you are not reaching level 5 of your debuff at that point, then you can also you know, kill rares, collect treasures, and stuff like that. But definitely focus on doing your dailies and your weeklies before focusing on anything else. Uh, connected to the Maw, we have Torghast. And Torghast is the system that's going to be crucial in crafting legendaries. This is where you get most of your Soul Ash from. Um, like, and when I say most, I mean like 95% plus. Doing the different Torghast levels, this is where the do this who crafts your legendaries. So it's important that you know what Torghast is about and how it works. So once you progress far enough in the Maw questline, you will eventually be sent to Torghast and start a different questline and storyline in there. Within Torghast, there are essentially six different uh, zones that you can zone into. Think of it like mini dungeons. And each of them have six levels that you have to complete. Now, which zones are actually open uh, will kind of rotate, I think, on a weekly basis. Um, and that's the less important part. But more importantly, within each of those zones, so for example, at the beginning, you will be sent to Skoldis Hall. There are different layers. And these layers uh, range from layer one to layer eight. And these increase in difficulty, but they also increase the rewards that you get. So it's going to be important to always complete the highest layer possible uh, to get the maximum amount of Soul Ash, which will allow you to craft legendaries or upgrade legendaries. So the first week, you will only be able to complete up to three layers in each of the little subzones. Um, in the second week, 
again, you will only be able to complete three layers in each of the subzones. And this is because you're going to be presented with three different subzones than what you had available in the first week. And then once you move on to week three, all of these will go up to level six. So you'll be able to get a lot more soul ash. Um, and then once we go to level or week four and anything after that, you will be able to move up to layer eight in each of the little subzones. And level eight obviously provides you with the maximum amount of soul ash that you can possibly get. To give you an idea for completing layer one of a Torghast run, you will get 120 soul ash. For completing layer eight, you will get 570. So there's a huge difference between those two. Um, and it's important to keep on top of this. I'm really glad that they time gated it because previously you were just able to get up to layer six, I believe, or layer eight as soon as you went in. And if that was the case, you would need to spend hours and hours and hours in there on a single character just to unlock all of the layers for all of the all of the different subzones. With this system, week one, you will probably have to spend an hour, maybe two hours in Torghast on each of your characters. And that is going to be a lot more manageable since um, then the second week when you come back in or the third week, you just need to go up and do three layers of each of the subzones instead of you know having to grind all of them now the last mode for torghast is the twisting corridors and this is going to be always open um, in addition to the two random um, sub zones that you get each week and from here this is something that you don't need to do it's not mandatory um, you can do it for fun but you will only get like cosmetic rewards, pets, transmogs, stuff like that, you will not actually get soul ash to craft legendaries from the twisting corridors. Within each wing of Torghast, there's going to be six levels, like I mentioned before. The first level and the second level are just like random mobs. You have to kill stuff and eventually find the exit that takes you to level two. Um, on the third level, there will be a vendor and you're just going to be running around clicking stuff. Uh, you don't have to kill anything on the third level. And then once you get to the sixth level, this is where you will have a boss fight that will reward you with Soul Ash um, and allow you to exit Torghast. So that is going to be the same for every single wing. Again, on level three, you get a vendor. On level six, you get a boss fight. And then in between those is just like killing stuff, clicking stuff, and collecting stuff. Um, so you can run through Torghast fairly quickly now with these changes. And hopefully this video helped you out a little bit with understanding on how the Maw and Torghast interact to help you craft your legendaries. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.